I had spent all my life on the home place. And back in the 80s, we decided that we just couldn't make it there anymore because of high interest and low commodity prices. And, and then there was th three families trying to make a living off the home place. And, and so when we had the opportunity to come into this place, that was my goal to begin with, was to make this place more productive so that we could continue to, to do what we love, and that's to ranch. I grew up on a ranch about 75 miles from here, right at the southern edge of Perkins County. Um, much different terrain, uh, much different soils. Rotational grazing and a lot of these scientific things were not heard of when I was growing up. We turned cows into a pasture and they probably stayed there a long time. So when Chuck and I got married and, and uh, lived on a different ranch, started learning some different practices and by the time we got here it was a whole new ball game. We moved on this place in uh, 2001 and uh, leased it for the first three years and then bought it at, at that time and, and so with any transfer of ownership you have to deal with with the prior owner's management and so after going through two four and six, you know, all three real dry years, we realized the importance of keeping the moisture on the place. And so with the rotation grazing, we have seen less erosion and uh, better plant growth because of the organic matter being put back into the soil. Our place is made up of uh, gently rolling terrain, sandy loam soils. We do have some areas of some clay pan. In the 18 years we've been on the place, I would say that 90% of that that was clay pan at that time has a little bit growing on it. So we're, we're making some progress there. Originally there was 900 acres of farmland and we've seeded down to where we're only cultivating no-till 500 acres. And a lot of that has been put back into native grasses and of course, and we do farm. We've got some corn that we put in yearly. And last year, we put in some rye into some alfalfa ground that we terminated. I'm hoping to go back with some warm season grass when we get through no tilling it. Some of the older natives coming back, we saw a small patch of prairie sand reed. We have one pasture that was basically blue grama and buffalo grass. And this year, We've had timely rains and kept everything growing and good. And we've seen the western wheatgrass come in and thicken up. We're also seeing some needlegrass that's coming back in that, those areas. So that long duration of rest has really helped and our controlled grazing has made quite a difference. We've got an area that's uh, got some saline seeps. We planted western wheatgrass and green needle in that area threw in a little bit of falcata and sicer milk vetch. Uh, we're seeing that the western wheatgrass is starting to fill in in those areas. It's a little thin, but it's growing. Those areas have, have dried up because we've got a perennial growing there versus farming, because that all was farmland for 60 years, maybe. And conventional tilled until 2005, we went to no-till, and been no-till ever since. We do have a portable water system. I just took a 16-foot steel water tank and uh, plumbed it with a valve. We've got an inch and a quarter plastic pipe, 200 pound PSI that we can drag around. We've got 1,200 feet of pipe on that, that line. And the cows get used to trailing in. It doesn't have a lot of capacity, but it sure worked well during the summer. We introduced cover crops. We've been doing it for uh, 10 years. I went to a seminar that Jay Furr from North Dakota was speaking and he said, you know, the, the best thing you can do before you go from a monoculture to a grass pasture mix is plant cover crops. We've had real good success with that. We've seen a reduction in chemical use and an increase in organic matter in, in our fields. We took sample for planting corn a year ago and we were at 3.4 on our organic matter, and, and I was visiting with Jay Furr about how much fertilizer to use. 
and that was the first time we used the Haney test. So it was kind of new and we were trying to figure out how to analyze that test. And he said, boy, he'd like to have that chunk of ground. It was a good test. We were fortunate to be able to uh, raise our two kids, uh, Tiffany and Jack, on uh, a couple different ranches. Um, three of our grandchildren live very close to us. The other is just a couple hundred miles away. And um, they're still at the age where it's fun to come out to the ranch and help. They have an ownership in the sheep. We run a few sheep here and it's kind of a project to basically keep the weeds down around the place. Grandkids have some sheep of their own and, and so they've got that interest when they come out to check on their sheep. But we do allot them just a certain amount of area to graze so that they aren't grazing it into the ground. And they do a good follow-up on the cattle. And the sheep tend to eat some of the, more of the forbs and, and finer stuff. It sure gives us a, an option to increase the production on the place on our organic matter. Karina has been my, on my right all the way through this. Uh, she has scratched her head a few times and wondered why we're doing it, but she understands that we're, we're trying to build this for the next generation and, and improve things. This country was settled back in uh, 07 to 012, 1912. There was periods in there where farming practices didn't regenerate the soil and we would like to leave this place in better shape.